let's start. Let's get into this fast. Ha ha ha. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so getting into this fast and furiously, Ryan, let's talk about F9, uh, full title, F9, The Fast Saga. Yeah. Um, Vin Diesel returns. Uh, basically, everyone returns unless they're dead. Uh, oh, wow. As, as a character, we'll yeah. address the Paul Walker thing in the room in a minute. Unless right. your character's not really dead. And there's our disclaimer. Um, uh, after Fate of the Furious, uh, there's a lapse between the films, and then this one starts uh, with um, an unusual mission tasking from uh, Mr. Nobody, played by Kurt Russell. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... I, I have not, still have not seen all of these, all of the Fast and Furious films. Um, this one is directed by uh, Justin Lin, who, it, looking at it, it feels like he's directed all of them, but he has not, in fact, directed all of them. No, no. James Wan did a couple, or did one, and but he, he's done. I think this is his fourth or fifth. Yeah, he's he's done a a, a fair dinkum amount, if you will. Um, A lot of cars. Um, yeah, they, they, they have to have cars in there. Even if they're doing things cars aren't supposed to do. Um, <laughs> what, what I have learned in trying to play catch up on this franchise, Ryan, is that um, they are uh, bigger. They, they adhere to the axiom that bigger is better, uh -huh. which, which may or may not always be true. Um, but in adhering to that, they do, in fact, go bigger in this film wouldn't you agree uh yeah, well yes yes <laughs> yes um you know i mean in the in the last film they uh well i, I guess it depends on what he's technically this is the 10th film in the series because of the hobbs and shaw spinoff right um but um which I sort of factor into the going bigger uh, that kind of went off in its own direction. I still kind of look more at the, uh, you know, the submarine being the last big big thing they did and they're going to have to one up the submarine. And I don't know. I mean, it, it, there's, there's a point where I think, I think most action films have a similar uh, path. Mm -hmm. um, some of them pull back um, and kind of reset so they don't get to the utter ridiculousness. Right. Uh, but that is not what they're doing here at all. It's almost as if, you know, they've, uh, they really don't. Uh, th this one has no care in the world to try to be remotely realistic in any aspect. Um, and it's more than happy to point out every time that it isn't realistic by saying, ah, but science. But, but science. Or can you believe? Well, well, yeah, there's, exactly. there's a lot of rampaging dismissal yes. in this film uh, where they dismiss what has gone before or how what has gone before has happened. Um, so, yeah, well, I, I'm, it's, you know, half the film is, is like not necessary. Well, it is kind of reconning. You know, or it's it's like sticking, you know, half the film is a flashback of some sort or another. Yeah. Where uh, we're either getting story about Dom that we didn't ever have before that is conveniently now available to us. Yeah. Um, or it is re literally rewriting of stuff that we've already seen and basically saying you didn't see what you saw. Right. Uh, which is, yeah, uh, a, a lot of films you talk about, a lot of action franchises have the kind of same bigger is better development. Um, but there is, you know, uh, there's a thing called the law of dimin diminishing returns. Um, and I, I, I guess if you're going to apply it to films, you have to determine what your return is to determine whether or not it's diminishing. Um, now, if you're looking at uh, story development, character development, then The Fast and the Furious has already 
crested the wave of the law of diminishing returns. Probably, yes. But I, I think, unfortunately, uh, Hollywood looks at the literal returns, which is mm -hmm. box office. And on that front, I don't know if The Fast and the Furious, through this film, is going to suffer from the law of diminishing returns because I think it's going to make a butt ton of money because people are going to go and see what they're doing now knowing that it's ridiculous yeah well and and yes so you know i i think inevitably the question becomes will audiences care that this is the most ridiculous uh, most outrageous um probably well you know what I, I can't say it's the weakest film by really but uh, but i mean and i don't think they do i i really don't think audiences will care that the uh you know that the, it's just a lot of stuff that doesn't necessarily make sense um a lot of the performances aren't that great um there's a lot of kind of over-the-top scenery chewing and yep. uh I mean, and, and they're not even qu quiet about it. Uh, I mean, it's almost as if they're saying, hey, look, we can get away with anything at this point. Yeah. Um, and, and then saying, and so we're going to try to get away with everything and then take it up another notch and get away with that as well. Yeah. Um, I just don't know where you go from this. I, I, I have, I mean, I don't know is... Uh, you know, in my written review, I joked that, you know, maybe the next film is a, a mashup with the triple X series. And so you get two doms for the price or, you know, two, two, two Vin D the... Yeah. So you have two Vins and, you know, for the price of one Vin or, or do they actually, I mean, they, they joke around with, Hey, we've been through so much. Maybe we're invincible. Well, okay. So in the next one, does it reveal lo and behold, they're aliens with superpowers or, you know, I mean, I don't, I just don't know. Overexposure to NOS has given them all yes. superpowers. Um, I, I, I saw a blurb somewhere where uh, Tyrese Gibson said that he wants the Fast and the Furious to cross over with the Transformers. Well, okay, but the problem is, is Transformers is more realistic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's getting that way, but my point would be, A, then we, we get two Tyrese's for the price of one, which I, I don't know if that's good or not, but uh, you would get uh, Vin Diesel driving Bumblebee. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't want to have anything to do with that. I I don't know that I do either. And I think that would force them to a either reintroduce Shia LaBeouf to the Transformers universe, or we would get Mark Wahlberg uh, in the Fast and the Furious. So which I, yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I would buy like a Do Josh Duhamel in the Fast and the Furious universe. I don't know if I buy the Wahlberg. Or the LaBeouf. But that's a separate argument. Um, so, yes, the law of diminishing returns. Now, you saw that we both saw this on the same day. There were two screenings. Yeah. So, you saw this four hours before I did. Yeah. Um, so, I I was in a, a, a mixed screening. You were in a press only screening. Yeah. And I was in a press and public screening. Um, and I was sitting next to someone who shall remain nameless. Uh, but she loves the franchise. She is a self-professed. She, she, she loves the Fast and the Furious franchise. And not only her, but other people in the audience. I've never heard so much laughing in an action film. And it was all that groany dad joke laughter. Yeah. And I'm just like, but... You're you're right in the fact that the whole movie is kind of like this wink wink nudge nudge about the film. So is it okay that people are laughing at this film during the? You know what I mean? I, well, I just yeah, don't know how I, that's going to shake out. Well, I mean, the ultimate question is, you know, they acknowledge pretty much everything that's nuts about the film, except for there's there there's a crazy. Uh, Vin Diesel in the water sequence that I, I, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. But oh, that, oh, which oh. which that's the one of the few things in the film that they don't actually acknowledge how crazy it is. Right. Most most everything else in the film, they'll be like, 
oh, well, that's crazy, or that's nuts, or what, you know, oh, well, that doesn't make any sense, or, well, you know, if you add up the numbers, I mean, they, they are literally commenting to the whole thing as if to say, look, we know that these, all these points in the script don't exactly work, or they don't make sense, yep. and we're going to acknowledge them. We're not going to fix them. Or we're not going to make know it, we know they're there. We, but we, we know that they exist. So if, you know, every time a, a plot hole or something strange pops up, they'll comment on it as if they were the audience saying, there's no way that those two are brothers. Right. But then, but so you know, it's, it, is, it is this weird kind of meta action movie. You know, in in a weird, but it's not like smart. Like I called uh, when Guy Ritchie put out The Gentleman. Yeah. I said that was a meta. That was Guy Ritchie making a meta movie about Guy Ritchie movies. This is not nearly that smart. Well, or or but that's I, the feel that you kind of get. Sure, I just I don't know that they care enough. Um, no, I think yeah. I think you know, uh, and 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 I don't know if you noticed, but. I don't know that they actually completed any mission that, or I'm not sure that, you know, with Mr. Nobody, there's seems to be some aspects of that story that are still untold. Um, there's a and, lot of things that are not done. So uh, in this, you know, or, or things just like we, we miss an entire, like 10 minutes of, of things happening and they just kind of jump to the point where, well, this happened, deal with it. Yeah, right. um, and you're like, uh, OK, well, I guess that's I mean, they love to do the uh, pull the carpet from underneath you as often as they possibly can. The problem being is at some point, and I think it happens extremely early in the film, you don't expect anything to really make any sense. They can say whatever they want. They don't have, you know, I mean, you're you're in the sort of space where, you know, they can cheat because they've already cheated. And we already already know that they've cheated, and yeah. so they can just keep on cheating if they want. That's fine, you know. Um, yeah, and so let's let's talk about some of the cheats, uh, w without getting too in depth. Uh, I, you know, I, I teased at the beginning. You know, we talk about dead characters, unless they're not dead. Yeah. So depending on what trailer you may have seen, you know that some characters that may or may not have been dead are now alive. Uh, you know, events that may or may not have happened, may or may not have happened. Um, but I need to talk about the biggest cheat. Uh, okay. and the, the, no, and, and for, no, yeah. no, I'm just, I'm just interested to hear what you consider the biggest cheat. Yeah, well, here, here's my biggest cheat. My biggest cheat is, uh, Paul Walker, uh, who, as we all know, tragically died as they were finishing F7, or, you know, Fast 7. Yes. So they've already been through Fate of the Furious. We've done a whole movie without Paul Walker. Or addressing the fact that Paul Walker has died. Um, so in this film, they cheat it. They bring Mia, Jordana, uh, yeah, Jordana Brewster back. Uh, you know, Dom's sister to help with this family issue. And Paul Walker is explicitly said he's watching the kids. Which I don't have a problem with a Mr. Mom. I just refuse to believe that that would happen uh, in, in this instance. But two, at the end of the film, they pull his car up while they're waiting to say grace. Mm -hmm. Because there's an empty chair. At this two movies you have to come up with an out if it's all about family real death is part of that and they have yet to actually face that they thought they did and they undid it with one character uh in this film. <laughs> there's there's actually been a couple characters who well who, uh, but over but, over the course of the uh, of, of the, the franchise that that have um quote unquote died yes in in dramatic ways um right and it's almost and so now that if you, if you go online you can see people are asking well when do we get to have person from you know this film come back then right. if that you know if we if this person can come back why not this person what do we have against 
this character? What do we have against this character? We liked this character. Why don't you bring them back too? Um, so, I mean, it's, it's again, I, I, I think that this is the ultimate fan service film. Um, and I think it, it crossed over to that after seven. Um, I think eight and that now this and uh, that they're really just, more hey, what do you guys, well, not just more is better, but it's almost like, well, what do you guys, what do you, you know, they're, 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 they've incorporated the whole what if universe idea in this. Well, right. what if they didn't really die? And what if, um, I, I mean, I'd love to see if, if we want to, you know, work in the, uh, the alternate timeline stuff and when, you know, it's like where in the, you know, where, what is real in this series? And it's at a point where anyone can die and come back. Really? Yeah. If the, if the, if the fan base wants to see them back, they will find a way to bring them back. Um, now, I don't know if they'll find a way to get, uh, the rock and vin diesel in a movie together again but you know that's why they did their splintered series you know that's true um so and they had uh, almost no screen time together in this one yeah well they had yeah yeah and cena and uh, anyway uh, there's there's just i don't know i i i I just i don't know i I don't know I, i i don't know um so I, when i left the film my comments were basically along the lines of you know there's nine times the family Nine mm-hmm. times the insanity, mm-hmm. um, and, <laughs> and 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 fans are gonna fans of the franchise are going to be okay with that. But it's I not. A, it's not a good movie at all. No, but you know, even I, if it's trying to be self-aware of yeah. the fact that it's not a good film, it that doesn't make it a good film. Well, you know, at least their suits are watertight. You know what I mean, right? Uh, anyway, um, I, 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 I don't know that any. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't fault anyone for enjoying the film, um, but in, but it's yeah. But I, I, I don't know why we're why it exists. I guess I other than. Other than the obvious, well, it makes money. Um, right. And that really, I mean, is that really where we're at? And well, I guess which, maybe it is. Does, does, does that mean that the fact that we are making 10 and 11, are they going to shoot them concurrently and just make it like a two film ending, like Infinity War and Endgame? I, but but what are they? I mean, with with the Marvel films and and as many as they had, they were all aiming for something. There was a. They, I mean, we kind of had, particularly of the last few films, they had a sense of where they were going. Right. I have no sense of, and I don't know if they have. A, you know, it's it's um, and it almost doesn't matter. Right. Well, that's uh, what I'm saying. Would they would they just turn the last two into some big? Uh, you know, fast and furious denouement, <laughs> you know, kind of events, films, and release them six months apart. I I don't know. You know, and just and and end it. You know, we talked about uh, uh, kind of comparing this to like Mission Impossible, and yeah. Mission Impossible keeps getting big, but Mission Impossible is the stakes are bigger, but the the stuff is now. I, it's a it's a weird thing. It's bigger, but it's not. It's still small and grounded and, and almost intimate. In yeah, possible. Com- well, sure. If you compare the two, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you if you compare Mission Impossible to almost any other film, and oh, you still have Tom Cruise scaling the Burj Khalifa. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So and, well, and and even the and the James Bond franchise it kind of has done. A similar thing where a lot of times they're one upping themselves and then they kind of bring it back in, rein it back in, get a new James Bond character, kind of reboot and, and move forward. But, um, but I, Fast it, and Furious never hits the brakes. No, it, it, it accelerated everything. I mean, it went, it went to ridiculous and then kept on going uh, so quickly. 
Um, I think, you know, a lot of us talk about how Fast Five uh, is is the film that we all think is the best. And and I think that, that maybe that is the sweet spot between insanity, you know, and uh, and and just enough realism, I guess. Right. Something, I don't know, something. But, you know, and then they just kept getting bigger and bigger from there. Because um, that's kind of when, you know, the the popularity really exploded. Right. Um, and I think they just... Yeah, they just it's, they they yeah. yeah like like you said they can't they can't put on the brakes um, and never pump, uh, never pump yeah. the brakes never pump the brakes uh, I don't know I mean it and it just feels like so this film is sort of a prequel sequel uh, you know I don't I don't know what because so much of it does happen in the past that um, yeah even even the post credit scene. Yes. Or mid credit scene seems to take place in the past. I didn't or, think about it till later. No, because you have to look at the hair. And, uh, well, okay. Fair. And so, you know what I mean? So I was just like, wait, I thought about it later. I'm like, but, wait, so that's but, a, that took place before. But the thing about that, too, is, is I don't know if they care that much to. Like, you may be looking at details that they didn't even think about. Right. Well, it was pretty obvious when I actually thought about it. Yeah, so it was Han's hair, but uh, it, was, it was young Han. So it was just weird. It, it it is it is just this weird kind of pedal to the metal, and it's actually kind of it, it it's kind of encapsulated in that scene uh, in seven uh when they're stealing the supercar and they jump from building to building to mm, building yeah, yeah and vin actually tries to hit the brakes and there aren't any <laughs> yeah and it's like yeah. that kind of sums up where this franchise is it's like you almost it, maybe want to bring it and you, you you can't there is no stopping it uh unless you crash it off of off a of skyscraper <laughs> um, and I don't think they want to do that yet. Um, they put up Fiero in space. I don't think they want to crash land this franchise yet. I don't. I, they might need to. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I, I. I. Yeah. It's it's nuts, is what it is. It's just nuts. Um, but again, I think if you've got diehard fans that have been through eight of these nine, then. I I think you're right. I don't think they're going to care uh, about how patently ridiculous it actually is. I mean, just in and then from a filmmaking standpoint, it, you know, it's got it's got holes you can drive that three segmented monster truck through at the end, uh -huh. uh, and don't and you don't even get us started on the electromagnets. Which, which don't the rules, obey the laws of physics. Well, and, and the rules change. Yes. For the electromagnets throughout the film. You know, uh, uh, you know, at one point it, they pull things directly to them. At another point, it, they change it. it so they leave that, like this magnetic wake. Yes. So yeah. they don't get pulled to the actual magnets. They get pulled to whatever and, behind and them. Yeah. Newton's, Newton's law does not apply. Because every action does not have an equal and opposite mm. reaction. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So you, you but, have to, you know, yeah. but they're not they're not interested in. in I, I but it's I mean that okay. I guess I, I guess the positive of this one is they do have a lot of car chases and stuff in this one, where they it do. kind of kind of felt like they were getting away kind of a little bit from what they were, but. It, I, I don't know how you, I mean, I, I, I can't imagine, like, if you go back and watch the first film and then compare it to where they are now, I don't, I mean, the, it's like, there is no we, straight line. How did we get from street racing with, you know, the, these to, to a Fiero docking with the International Space Station? Just yeah. go ahead. To a Fiero yeah. docking with the International Space Station. Exactly. I, uh, I don't. I don't. There even... is no line. There's no. There is no line from street racing to Fiero docking with the ISS. There, and, there's just not one. And yet here we are. 
and maybe that's fine. You know, I don't know. I mean, like, look, it's it's made over two hundred million dollars in China already. Um, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, they're thinking it you might do sixty five this weekend. It wouldn't shock me if it goes over eighty this weekend. Um, no, because people want to be but, in the theaters, and this is an event movie. I, I think, yeah, I, but but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't. But it, but to me, if if a, a Quiet Place Part Two can make um, fifty to sixty, this should be able to make you know eighty. It, sh- oh, it just yeah. feels like it should. Right. Um, and, and I have in the before no, times, it would be easy. Oh, it would be over. It would be a hundred, hundred and fifty probably. And yeah. you know, and, and I, I have no idea how much this movie costs to make, but it looks like a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. It, yes. Uh, yes, it does. It looks I mean, like, like a lot just. Of money. Just thrown all over, you know. Here we go, raining, yep. raining bills. Let's rain the bills all over the place. Yep. Um, so I don't even know. I mean, I, I guess, regardless of what happens, they're going to say, "Hey, it's a victory." Yeah. Uh, financially, regardless of even if it ever breaks even or makes money or whatever, ever you know, it's it's just going to be ruled as a, a milestone coming out of darkness. Yeah, you know? it, it it no matter what, it's going to win the box office. And yes, it will be, if it does p- not as good as they want, they'll say, well, we're not out of COVID yet. If it does huge, they'll be like, we're still in COVID and look. Yeah. So it's, it, it, it's, it's a perfect film at, at the perfect time to be able to do that with, or to be able to, to claim that with. So you know, whereas a quiet place part two, you're it's very specific. Uh, you know, if this had come out the week after Black Widow, Black Widow would have been this movie, and we don't know how good or bad that is yet. Yeah, but you know, Black idea. Widow would have been the one that they would have been using as the benchmark. Uh, and they yeah, probably but, still will. And they probably still will. You know, that's it, you know, it's it'll be like okay, well, this is. I mean, I we're probably going to be comparing. Um, you know, I don't. I don't know when we're going to come out of the shadow of this. We may never. I mean, it, it, right. there may be uh, forever. You know, history will be happened pre You know, before the pandemic happened after right. the pandemic. Uh, you know, the, so we we that that may be forever how history remembers cinema and box office and things. We'll just have to see, I guess. Yeah, I don't it will and it, it will if if uh, it affects the way they make the movies. Not just the box office returns, but if it affects the yeah. way the films are budgeted and put together, then yes, there will definitely be a a, a stark line pre and post pandemic. So um I've I, I don't know what to tell people about seeing this. If you um, if you if you want to see it, see it. Yeah. You know, and if you enjoy it, I'm not going to tell you to feel bad about it. No, um, there are there are you know a lot of people there will say, well you you like that movie, but let me tell you why it stinks. Well, I probably agree with why you think it stinks. Yeah, yeah but you, you know, know you know but you know I mean but if if it entertains you and you have fun with it, I'm just gonna I'll just roll my eyes and and be okay with it. Yep, that's and I, there you go. That that is that is yeah. That's where we'll leave it. That's where we will leave. F nine, the fast saga. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean as, they can, they they can't even make the name any shorter, can they? No, next and, one will and, just be called ten. 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 Or just F. Or Zoom. I, I wait, there was a movie, but I think that was a Tim Allen movie, and I don't think they want to take that name. Anyway, uh, I'll just, yeah, yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> so yeah, so that that that's where we're going to leave F9 the Fast Saga. As I alluded to, we are going to be seeing Black Widow uh next week and we will be talking about that. Uh there's a Chris Pratt movie coming out on Amazon called The Tomorrow War, uh which we should be uh screening as well and we will be talking about that. But I think movies barring a major complication in this recovery uh, from the pandemic, uh, I think movies are back. I think the I think we're not going to see any more uh, pushbacks. We might see some rejiggering of future releases, like DC and Marvel always seem to do, uh, where they'll like rearrange stuff. But I don't think we're going to see what we saw for the last year. I think movies are going to be slated and they're going to come out. Um, well, and, and what's going to be you know what's going to be interesting is we're going to start to see how big of a void there is next year 
um, because a lot of the stuff coming out this year was made two years ago. Right. Um, so the pandemic impact, we, you you know, audience wise, you can feel it now. But as far as like material and right. stuff being made and things that were out, you know, that were available to put out, uh, we you know, it, next year might be a little thin. Yeah, because the production was shut down. So yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what they've got. Wonder how many films that were just sitting up there waiting are going to be like. Well, we'll bump those out. You know that that maybe they didn't want to want to necessarily release before. Wonder how many of those will come out. So we'll have to. We'll, that, it'll, that'll be an interesting time. But you're right. I think 2022 will be. Except for the tent poles, I think it'll be interesting to see where the gaps are. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to check that. But until that time, everyone take it easy. Stay safe. Don't forget to like us. Follow us on social media at BS Movie Podcast. You know the drill. Blah, blah, blah. You hear it every time on every podcast you listen to. But do it for us anyway. So till we talk to you again, I'm Mark. That's Ryan. Bye, Ryan. See you guys. Uh, and we will talk to you all later.